Relay Through Organs or Us is the largest event in the world promoting organ donation. And through the Relay, we support 100,000 Americans waiting for organ donors. It's a 12-person team, 200-mile event, where runners run five miles at a time. They hand the baton to the next person on their team, and we use the baton to symbolize the transfer of an organ. And the entire event is the largest event in the world now promoting organ donation. And every year we have very special teams. This year, the, one of the featured teams is the Drink Coal team. Both of Cole's kidney donors are on the same team running 200 miles to meet Cole at the finish line where they'll all run across the finish together. It's a fabulous story. Uh, my name is Warren Heffelfinger and we're here to uh, run in support of uh, Cole Comby who is a young boy who we were lucky enough a year ago to be able to donate a kidney to and we're here to show his support and support for other people who are either going through this or have gone through it or thinking about going through it. And, this, his gift of the kidney to Cole has been such an incredible gift that our family will continue to just get more and more out of every day. Um, his participation in this run is amazing. Um, <laughs> it's been great and um, we're just thrilled to meet Cole at the finish line. It's just been about a year and a, year and a month, I think, since we uh, did the donation. So yeah, so a year ago I was recovering, Cole was recovering, and I think we talked about it. Some friends of ours did this last year, and we thought it would just make sense for us to do it, and do the support of Cole and everybody else. And we felt like this was a gift that was given to our family uh, to be able to do this. And it's a lesson that we learned a lot about ourselves, and I hope that my kids have learned something from it, and we'll learn something and take from, something from this for the rest of their life. My name is Carla Combi, and our son is Cole. And he, I gave him my kidney when he was one for the first time, and then our donor who you just met gave him his second kidney a year ago at age 11. My name is Rob, Carla's husband, Cole's dad, and we're waiting for Warren, the, uh, our, our friend and donor from last year, to come over the hill. And he's going to pass the wristband on to Carla and uh, hopefully we'll continue on our venture down to uh, Santa Cruz here. And, and we'll have our son at the uh, yeah, and, finish line as well. And Cole's going to run in the last 100 yards or so with Warren and should be a great, great uh, ending to a, uh, a great last three months. We had a lot of support and raised a lot of money for uh, Oregon. I certainly you can tell us. I'm sure it's getting bigger and bigger every year and more participation and more donations and it's going to all go back and, and hopefully drive more donations long term. Well, my name is Harold Volkemer, and uh, we're here at the Relay, which is a 200 mile relay race for uh, all the proceeds go to Organs R Us, which is a, an outfit that um, uh, doesn't do actual organ transplants, but it gets the word out about organ donation. And uh, so we're Uncle Wally's Hiking Club. We've been out here for seven years. We like to have a lot of fun. Uh, our uh, byline is we try to tag every other van in the, uh, in the relay, and we get most of them. And uh, so we love coming up here. Like I said, it's our seventh year. And we, um, we uh, have a lady in my office uh, named Becky who is on a uh, kidney transplant list. And so we run in her honor and uh, we take a medal home to her every year. And uh, we're hoping that through getting the word out for organ donation, she'll get her uh, transplant and have a long and healthy life. So that's why we're here. We're, we're called the Trail Rats. Trail Rats. And we're based out of Mill Valley. It's an amazing effort. These guys do a really, really great job. They work really hard at it. And they've been doing this for the last few days without any sleep. So our hats are off to them. We're out here to do what yeah, we can. It's awesome. We'll, we'll probably beat uh, Facebook and Google by, what, 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah at least. My name is Trista Stockwell. My name is Sean Stockwell. This is Ava Thornton. I'm Angel Thornton. And this is Ben Thornton. <laughs> so our um, 
greatest connection is both of our sons had heart transplants. Sean was actually born with um, a congenital heart defect called hypoplastic left heart syndrome. He was um, born with half of a heart. So Sean had many, many, many surgeries um, that led up to his heart transplant. And um, we live in Alaska. So we were um, taking Sean to the lower 48 for his surgeries. But when it got to a point where his heart wasn't failing, we brought him um, to Stanford. And when we brought him to Stanford in April of 2006, he wasn't expected to live very long. He was very critical. Sean ended up waiting two years, three months, and 17 days for his heart. And he lit, obviously, um, he was very critical up until that time. During that time, we met our Thorntons. We all lived in the Ronald McDonald house together. Ben, however, was much more critical than Sean waiting for his heart. Sean's in advanced rejection right now, believe it or not. He should not be looking the way he does. He had a biopsy two weeks ago that revealed he was in advanced rejection. So we are here in the area at Stanford for a while for treatments, and um, but he is doing well. So we um, were so excited that we got to be here to see Ben's team and to see our friend Curtis and Shelly Lindsay and to see everybody that's done this because I've always followed the runners and the relay and so we were really excited to be a part of this. But also to raise awareness for donation, people don't realize truly the need. To this day, I still hear people say that if it says it on your license, that doctors won't try as hard to save your life. It's the most bizarre thing. Doctors actually try harder to save your life because your heart cannot stop if you're gonna be an organ donor. When they see that, they will actually try harder. And also, they don't want your family to come back and say, you didn't try hard enough. So they actually, every doctor has told me, we actually try harder when you're an organ donor because we are trying to preserve those organs. So this is Ben, and um, he was um, diagnosed at the age of two. Um, we had no idea he had any kind of heart problems. He seemed like a healthy little guy. Um, she was just born and um, he was sick. And so um, to make sure he didn't have pneumonia, they did a um, chest x-ray and um, revealed that he had an enlarged heart. And if we wouldn't have done that x-ray, we wouldn't have found out Ben wouldn't be here right now. We brought him into Stanford and he went into cardiac arrest. He received CPR for 60 minutes. And um, at that time, he was placed on life support um, for seven days. During when he was on um, life support, a uh, blood clot went to his spine. He, now he has a spinal cord injury from that. But um, he's doing really well and um, adjusted really well to all of his challenges. And, and uh, Ben's dad is Gary Thornton. He's a Sonoma County deputy. And Ben, um, we wanted to run Organs R Us and as a team and put a team together and then we, someone said why don't you run for and benefit of somebody in dedication. That's where we started and uh, Ben has, uh, like I said, we've ran for him for four years. The last three years the, uh, the race has been dedicated to Ben and Ben on a, on a couple occasions has been able to uh, cross the finish line with us uh, when he's healthy. The reason why Dennis is really uh, partial to this, the race is because your son He's had over heart surgery and he's had a valve replaced. So and, and he, he may was, have to have a heart transplant someday. And he might have to have a heart transplant. Oh, so that's Ben's, uh, Dennis is partial to that because of his own son. And he realizes, you know, how hard it is to uh, keep Ben going like he's in it. I have to our support people. Yes. My, my girlfriend Katie yes. and my mom. Yes. Laney, that's yes. right behind you. Yes. Uh, yeah. If it uh, really, if it really wasn't for them, they're kind of shuttle some of our gear around, collect some, uh, help out, and uh, yeah, and they, they really help out supporting us, getting the, getting the things that we need because we're out there in the field. We can't really stop and shop and do that kind of stuff. And then lastly, we have some really good sponsors. Uh, we're lucky and fortunate. That Brooks sponsors us. They give us all a couple pairs of shoes, all the clothing we wear. They uh, they hook us up for that, and they're they're uh, been very very generous. Uh, Camelbacks another big uh, donor. And, uh, and all, really, all because we, we say we're running for Ben and we're running for Organs R Us. Ben really doesn't know how important this stuff is. <laughs> he, acts, he acts shy, but he's actually a great guy. He knows what's going on. I'm sitting on the finish line right now, handing out medals to everybody coming in. And I just met a small gentleman, kidney transplant recipient. And he's, he's younger than my children, and, and he is, I gave the medals to him to hand out to his parents' team. It, that, that alone made the whole day for me. So, uh, 
just just really proud of her and myself, obviously, um, for making it to this finish line today. Lindsay, you talk to him. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, my son Curtis. He had, he's the one that had the heart transplant. My wife Shelly. He was uh, three years old when he had the heart transplant. He was born with half a heart. Uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome, that was his diagnosis. And after that led into the, the heart transplant. And while we were there, we met other families and became very close because every, everybody going through the same type of situation of the, of the heart transplant. And it's just, uh, it's an amazing experience, an amazing uh, journey, I guess, so to speak, to go from Possibly not knowing what's going to happen to your son, knowing that there's a possibility that his life will, will go on because of somebody else giving giving the life. It became more than just a journey. It became such a coincidence of how things happened. Uh, the other boy, Sean, Sean Stockwell, who, who had di diagnosed with the same birth defect as my son, hypoplastic, he was there waiting for a heart. What a year before we got there. About eight months. He he's been waiting. He was waiting for a heart for about eight months before, when we arrived at the hospital when, when Curtis got listed, and it was on December sixth at like one o'clock in the morning at the we're all staying at the Ronald McDonald house. So at one o'clock in the morning, Sean was so excited he came up, knocked on the door of, of our room to tell us that he just got the call that he's gonna get a heart. Well, we're on this whole emotional roller coaster that morning, and like, what time did we get the call that it wasn't gonna go about through? Nine. About nine. About nine o'clock in the morning, we got the call that that particular heart, he wouldn't be able to get because there was a defect and they didn't wanna do it. Little did we know, two o'clock that afternoon, we got the call that a heart became available to him and that that's like unheard of the same day it's an emotional journey you know not just for us but for all of us because we're all there for the same reason and matter of fact we support each other so much that when we went home sean was still waiting for a heart because the other one wasn't wasn't gonna work so a year and a half later a year and a half later, we got the phone call. We live in Reno. Sean's from Alaska. And we got the call at 11 o'clock, 11.30, that Sean is going to get the heart. So my wife hopped in the car at 12 o'clock at night, hauled butt to Stanford, which is five hours away, to be with Trista while, while he was going through the... the um, <clears throat> procedure. The advice that I can give them is they just need to stay positive, think good thoughts, and be be strong. Uh, and you'll find out that you'll probably be stronger than you ever thought you were, especially the women. The women are way stronger than a man will ever be in a situation like this. And that's no joke. Every man that you talk to that has gone through what we've gone through, the women is the backbone. For some reason, something kicks into them and they're, they're stronger than we could ever think of being in a situation like this. So you just, you just have to be positive, think strong, and be there. 